Well, in the immortal words of the robot chicken version of M. Night Shyamalan, what a twist! Glass, yeah! I, uh, I really wasn't sure what to expect coming into this one. I've been avoiding, um, trailers. I'm sorry, not trailers. I've been avoiding, <laughs> I've been avoiding reviews. Um, like I didn't look at, uh, the Rotten Tomato score. You, you know, reviewers who I normally follow, I saw they had reviews out. I didn't watch them or read them. Um, I did pick up the general whiff of a very divided, leaning, negative response. People didn't seem to love it. So I didn't know what to expect going in. I liked Unbreakable a lot, but haven't revisited it in a long time. And I liked Split quite a bit. Um, but I mean, if there's anyone who has a history of completely obliterating the their potential and nose diving into ideas that just were never going to work, it's M. Night Shyamalan. So... This really could have gone anyway, and I kind of went in very nervous. And came out quite liking it. Um, now that being said, I get why a lot of people don't, why a lot of people get thrown off by it. And having now, like, consumed some of the uh, reviews that I've been putting off, a lot of hang-up seems to be on the ending. And I will get to that, but that's spoilers, so we'll circle back to it. The first thing is, this, I would say, it does match the description of an M. Night Shyamalan version of a superhero movie, but you need to really realize the emphasis is on the M. Night Shyamalan. This is his approach, this is his pacing, this is his characters in a superhero kind of setting. Anyone who went in expecting something feeling more like what superhero movies are standardly today um, just is not going to get it at all. Um, it helps to have a pretty decent working knowledge of both Unbreakable and Split. I think uh, Split probably a little bit more because, like I said, I haven't revisited Unbreakable in a long time, and, but it, I remembered it well enough to catch everything that was going on there. Uh, with Split, it gets a little bit more into the nitty-gritty. Uh, the core performances are all really good, which is a big saving grace because what can sink uh, an M. Night Shyamalan movie a, a fair number of the time is the casting. And not that he casts people who can't act. It's just that he writes very stilted dialogue. He does not write natural-sounding speech. And some actors can work with that. Some can't. And, you know, when he gets actors who can actually work with the kinds of things that he tends to write and the way he tends to write them, you know, you get things like The Sixth Sense, like Split, like Unbreakable, like Signs. Um, but when he gets actors who don't know what to do with these kinds of characters and these kind of words, you get things like The Village and The Happening. And it, it can be... It can be really painful. Thankfully, I mean, the the core, the main three characters are all returning from good Shyamalan movies, so they all know what they're doing. But even beyond that, everyone else is quite good as well. I mean, Sarah Paulson, I've never seen her give a, a bad performance, so uh, that helps. And actually, I was quite uh, surprised how much I ended up liking, I, I don't know the actor's name, but the guy who played um, Bruce Willis's kid in Unbreakable is back playing that role again, now as an adult, he's quite good. It's something about his, he's got very dark eyes. There's something oddly compelling about that. Um, I think uh, ultimately MVP performance-wise is going to be James McAvoy because much like in Split, he's got the showiest part. Um, he gets to show off his acting a lot more than uh, than anyone else does, and he kind of revels in that. Um, but Bruce Willis is, Bruce Willis is awake, for this, that's not always a guarantee these days. Um, but yeah, no, he's he's giving a performance of the caliber that he gave the last time. So he's on point. And I mean, Samuel Jackson, <laughs> oh man, he he does great work. So structurally, the film is a bit weird. So 
It opens what, with what feels like it could be the start to a more conventional um, clash of hero and villain type film. Um, the middle section where, and this I don't consider a spoiler because it was clear from one of the trailers, where um, Elijah Price, that's uh, Samuel Jackson's character, David Dunn, that's Bruce Willis, and Kevin, or the Horde, I'll probably just call him, um, which is James McAvoy's characters, are all in a psychiatric facility being treated by Sarah Paulson, who is trying to cure them of the delusion that they have superhuman abilities. And... That is sort of the longest stretch, and it is slow, but it's slow in the way that anyone who knows M. Night Shyamalan movies should expect an M. Night Shyamalan movie to be slow. You know, it's it's pacing, certainly comparable to Unbreakable. Um, so, and I quite enjoyed that. I liked the interactions a lot. I liked the... there. I, I felt there was a sense of tension um, throughout that whole seg section that um, worked quite well. And then the third act, the third act is undoubtedly um, the weirdest. Because um, what is going on in the third act is very strange. Uh, Shyamalan blatantly sets something up and then very deliberately does not deliver it. So that's the first thing. We, so we're dealing with, uh, to a certain degree, deliberate disappointment. Um, which is always a difficult thing to juggle. So he's got that at play. He has got, I, well, I was going to say a pair of twists. I would actually argue three twists um, that are kind of stacked up back to back to back. And uh, admittedly, the second one of those twists, which is like the big one, came very close to losing me. The third one kind of softened the blow of the second and... It gave the film a finishing note that I was actually quite happy with. But yeah, there, there is, there is, that second twist, man, it's, um, it's a doozy. And I don't necessarily mean like you'll never see it coming, but you, you will never see it coming. But like in a, wait, what? Kind of way. Um, but uh, I'll get into that in, in a little more detail, um when I started talking spoilers. Uh, but ultimately, I'm okay with the ending. Um, I don't love it. It's probably the weakest section of the movie, and if something's going to be your weakest part, the ending, that's not a good place to have your weakest bit. That said, I don't hate it. I'm, I'm pretty okay with it, all things considered. And... I, I feel like, uh, in many ways, the very final note of it um, kind of saves it as a whole from where I was afraid it was going to leave me feeling by the end. So I think, I think I'm going to start getting into spoilers. Short version, I actually quite liked it. It's hard for me to recommend because I feel like, like I said, I can see why this didn't work for a lot of people. The end especially. Um, but I, I still liked it. And I even do like the ending. I don't love the ending, but I do like it. So I'm, I am going to get into spoilers now. Okay, so I mentioned three twists. Twist one, I loved. Which is that we, we delve a little bit more into the Horde, uh, Kevin's history and sort of the traumatic events that caused his split. Uh, and the, the formation of the multiple personalities. And one of the major contributing factors was his father left. And that left him unguarded with his very abusive mother. What The first twist that we find out is that Kevin had always thought and had been operating on the assumption that his dad just bailed. He just got on a train one day and didn't come back. Well... That wasn't just any train. That was the train that Elijah Price derailed at the start of Unbreakable. The same train accident that spawned uh, David Dunn and sort of initiated his realization of his powers. So that's twist one, which I like a lot. Um, then there's twist two. Twist two is the, is the apparent existence of of a mul multiple millennia old secret society 
that exists to keep people with superhuman abilities from being revealed, either by convincing them that they are just delusional or by killing them if necessary. And first of all, that that very concept is that's bonkers. Um, and and it feels it feels like the biggest leap that this thing could take. Because if you remember the other films, Unbreakable was pretty dang grounded. It was, I mean, that was kind of its pitch. It was a very realistic world. Split was not as grounded, but wasn't this off the rails. This So this is asking a really big leap of the audience, especially relative to what kind of had been stab established as how real is this world. So that's that's one thing that's going on here. But then in addition to that, part of what goes on there is they do kill the Horde and they do kill David Dunn, which that was where I started to go like, wait, what? Wh what? Like, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But there's then the third twist, which is that Basically, Elijah Price, Mr. Glass, knew the whole time that he and the other two were not going to survive this whole thing. And he had arranged for the multiple security cameras recording everything going on in and outside the, uh, the mental facility to be streamed and then to be... Uh, and then to go out to people who would then upload it for the general public. In other words, reveal that what humans had been told is the limit of human possibility is not. People can achieve more and be more. And ending it on that note, as opposed to just ending it on there's a secret society note, it worked for me. There's something about the odd kind of hopefulness of, yeah, but now the secret's out, and the the world knows and who knows what happens next and there's sort of that air of possibility to it that d for me did a lot to kind of take the curse of the n insanity of the uh of the secret society twist um yeah and that that's just kind of how it played out for me by the end first twist loved it second twist wait what and then third twist Okay, yeah, no, I'm good now. Um, and I don't know how reflective that is of anybody else's experience watching it, but I could definitely see plenty of people where that second twist, that reveal of the secret society, just makes people go, that's it, I'm out. And I wouldn't even blame them for that. It's kind of a dumb idea. But um, the way it pans out, ultimately, I'm good with it. I'm satisfied with it. I actually quite like this movie. So, yeah. Glass. Have you seen it? What do you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. A whole bunch of stuff to do because there's buttons and links. There's one to the Patreon. I just restructured the, um, uh, the reward tiers if you want to check it out. If you haven't been there in a while and seen what's what. Um, plus, I got a P.O. box, other links besides. Check out any or all of them if you want, or if you don't, that is okay, too. Because at the end of the day, you are the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.